Hey guys, it's me, it's Queen Osset Haru, and thank you for joining me for another wonderful edition of Ask an Aquarius. If you haven't already, please hit the red subscribe button and smack the bell. Also, if you have time, please like this video. <laughs> Pass it on to someone else and drop us a positive comment in the comment section. Every time you like and share and comment on a video, you are helping that channel more than you could possibly know. The YouTube algorithm is brutal. <laughs> so the more you like your favorite shows, the more you like your favorite YouTube personalities, the more you really do help us out. Okay. All right, guys. Now I wanted to tell you something before I get started. Um, I got a Christmas present today, right? <laughs> I'm so happy. Um, I got a Christmas present today. One of my subscribers, one of the people I talked to, his name is Jim, and I talked to him all the time in the comment section, uh, told me that he bought me a Christmas present. So I was like, ooh, gifts. <laughs> I love Christmas. I love gifts, period. Y'all know that gifts are my love language. So it came today. So I got my third Christmas present, which I'm very tickled about because when I first came to Costa Rica, one of the things I was concerned about was that I was never going to get a gift ever again because my family's in the States. So I know my family and some friends might mail me things, you know, but you know, when you're single and you live by yourself, it, these kind of things kind of often fall by the wayside. So I'm like, oh, who's going to who's gonna give me gifts? <laughs> so my uh, subscribers and my clients have been sending me all kinds of cute things, Harry Potter things and all kinds of stuff. So I wanted to show you the third gift that I got for Christmas from Jim. It's so cool. This right here is the necklace. It's basically a moon. Let me move it over a bit so you can see it by itself. There you go. It's a moon. A crescent moon and in the center is the Aquarius isn't that cool and it's so crazy because just the other day I I didn't see this necklace I saw the other piece this was a set that he sent me so I didn't see the necklace but I saw the other piece and the other piece is this bracelet they came together the bracelet and the necklace and I just adore them right so it was crazy because I saw them the other day and I was talking to a gentleman who actually um, sells these. So I was trying to cut a little deal with him so I could review them on the channel. And before I even had a chance to talk to him, I got this in the mail and this beautiful bracelet. And I love this set because it is it's me. And that's what he said. He said, this set is really you. And I didn't know what it was. It was a surprise. So I was like, oh my God, that is truly me. That is gorgeous. So I can wear this with so many things, especially the new earrings I just bought myself for Christmas. So this is really going to be cool. Um, so I want to thank you so much. I want to thank all of you, anybody who sends me anything, even messages, you know, whatever you send that you took the time out of your day to send me some positive vibration, some jewelry, <laughs> a crown, you know, whatever you sent me or whatever you've given to me, if it was just comments or likes or shares, whatever it was, I am eternally grateful. <laughs> None of that is lost on me. I am eternally grateful and I thank you all so much. Jim, this is so cute and I'm going to sport it. I am going to sport these babies, okay? All right, so now I want to tell you guys something else. Um, I only got a couple more minutes. I don't. I try not to keep you guys too long. So I want to tell you one more thing. Uh, this was today's topic. Basically, a woman said to me in the comment section, or it might have been a man, I can't tell now I think about it. Somebody said to me in the comment section that they have a friend and she's an Aquarius and she's being verbally and probably emotionally, mentally, and we don't even know. She could be getting abused physically too, for all we know, but she's being abused in her relationship. And when asked, she's an Aquarius, and when asked why she's staying, um, she said that she was staying for the sake of the children. Now, 
mind you, this woman has had trauma from, you know, abuse in the past. So basically this is just, in my opinion, her, you know, living out more of that trauma. A lot of times a person who's abused as a child ends up in an abusive relationship. It's like some kind of, some kind of way they're energetically working through the issues that abuse brings up in a person or the fact that they didn't deal with their own abuse as a child. Here it is back as an adult and it's time for them to deal with it. But what we come to find is that they generally deal with it very similarly to how they dealt with it as a child. As a child, they were powerless. And as an adult, they actually do have power, but most of them don't exhibit it. And they allow the other person to abuse them because they still have damage, trauma, whatever going on from the childhood issues. So this is what we're seeing with her. Her saying she's staying for the kids is basically an excuse. She is staying because she doesn't believe in her heart and soul that she can do better, that she can do better by herself or in a different relationship or whatever the case is. She doesn't believe that. So as her friend, the best thing that you can do is encourage her, build her up, tell her, you know, and, and a lot of times, I'm going to tell you, I had to counsel one woman for years before she left her abusive relationship. It was really a problem for me because she was coming to me to get readings and I was encouraging her to go to therapy, go to domestic abuse, you know, um, counseling, that kind of thing. And she just would not do it and she would not leave this man. And he just kept abusing her, kept abusing her. And I just kept on doing her readings and talking to her till I was blue in the face until finally two years later, she left and she's fine now. She's great now, as a matter of fact. But the whole point was, was that I was basically begging her <laughs> to walk away from this relationship. And they always have an excuse. If it's not the kids, it's that they can't financially make it by themselves. If it's not the finances, then it's, you know, some other excuse. It's always a different excuse. But the bottom line is, is that they don't believe in themselves. Their self-esteem is in the toilet and they need to build themselves up before they're going to be able to make a move. So I encourage you to encourage your friend, you know, and she might not want to hear it nine times out of 10, but I would just keep encouraging her. Even if she didn't want to talk about her relationship, I would keep on encouraging her to do things that empowered her. Oh girl, you should, you know, you should check out this book or you should go to this, this workshop or you should consider doing this. I would keep on encouraging growth, healing in the person. Whenever I'm around somebody and they're limited, and I can see that they're limited in some kind of way, that something is holding them back. Basically, there's some kind of blockage. Not that, that you know they're limited in a negative way, but that something is holding them back. Whenever I see that and I address it and they fight it like she's fighting you, I just keep on encouraging them. Instead of saying, oh yeah, you know, you're still in that messed up relationship, you need to leave dude alone. I would just keep on encouraging her like, yeah, girl, what about going back to school? Yeah, you used to say that you wanted to do fashion design, right? Wasn't that your dream? You should do some of that. I would keep encouraging her because what she needs is to be built up. So as her friend, build her up. And then one day she'll discover on her own when she's in a more strong place, this is some BS. <laughs> I ain't got to stay here and put up with this cat. Likewise, when it comes to staying for the kids, a lot of times I really do understand when people say that. One of my friends told me he stayed in his relationship because he knew that the mom would have all kinds of men basically around his children. So he stayed in the relationship because he didn't want his children to go through hardships because they split up. So he stayed in their relationship and they're doing fine now. You know, they work through everything and everything is good. But the point of the matter is, is that a lot of times you will hear people say that. And honestly, that's a two, that's a two sided blade because on one hand, okay, I'm staying for the kids because I don't want them to be in bad situations. You don't have to stay with them to make sure they're not in bad situations. You have to be present. You have to be diligent. You can be living down the street around the corner <laughs> across the city and still be a diligent parent. That's the thing, number one. And number two, 
do you not realize that the child knows what's going on? Children may not have the intellectual capacity to speak on what's going on, but they're very intuitive and they can feel when things aren't right. So if your husband was just berating you in the other room, or if your wife just got finished attacking you, your child might not see what just happened they may not see <laughs> the situation but they feel every single thing that's going on in that house so you staying for the sake of the children you're really just damaging the children because you're putting them in the line of trauma and that abusive parent is probably abusing them too if your husband or your wife or your boyfriend is abusing you what makes you think they're not abusing your children in a lot of cases, they are. and a lot of cases, it's in your face. And sometimes it's when you're not around. An abusive person should not be left around your kids, period, if it's their parent or not. So I've heard this argument many, many times. And every time I hear it, I think it's more damaging to keep children in an unloving, abusive household than it would be to branch off by yourself and create a safe space for you and your kids. The best thing I ever did was leave my ex-husband. Our relationship was awful. My daughter was suffering. She was only like two years old, but I could see that it was affecting her. One time we had this big argument and she stood there and just peed on herself. She was already potty trained. And I could tell this was bothering her, like, you know, emotionally, psychologically, it was bothering her. So I left. I made the best decision for her because seeing her parents fighting, the cops coming, all that kind of stuff that was going on back then, that is not good for a child. And even if all that wasn't going on, just the bad energy between us is not good for a child. It's not good for a child to grow up in an unloving environment. So if you have an abusive partner and you tried to you know, work things out, you've tried to go to therapy, you've tried to change things around and things just are not changing and they're either the same or getting worse, it's time for you seriously to consider moving on. And a lot of times the for the kids excuse is just an excuse because what it really is that the person is scared. They're scared to go out on their own. They're scared to have to parent with somebody you know, and do to all the things that you're going to have to do with that person from another place. They're scared. I was scared. I don't, <laughs> I mean, I'm not scared a lot. It takes a lot to frighten me. But when I was living with my daughter's father, my daughter was two years old. I was terrified because even though the relationship was bad, at least it was secure. We had a home. I knew he was going to bring money to the home. You know, it was secure in those kind of ways. So I was concerned, like, can I provide? Can I feed the child? Am I going to be able to take care of us? I was terrified. Venturing off by myself, being independent, paying all my own bills. How am I going to make this happen? He had me believing I needed him. He had me believing I couldn't do it by myself. So I was scared. And then, you know... I started talking to counselors. I talked to a domestic abuse counselor. I talked to the cop a couple of times. I talked to different people and they were like, nah, <laughs> you got this. Put one foot in front of the other, many before you have done it and many after you will do it again. And I was like, okay. And after talking to my elders and talking to people, that's why it's good to have elders and a support system. And if you don't have that, there's plenty of professionals that are paid. <laughs> like I said, the domestic abuse counselors, they're paid to be that support system when you're in that situation. I went, I was able to call my counselor when I needed help. They helped me do an exit plan. They helped me get my budget together. They helped me get my first apartment. They helped me, um, they gave me all kinds of services to help with utilities. So I don't know every different state, every different situation is different, but there are supports that are put in place in many different cities and counties that you can take advantage of. You have family, you might have friends. And if you don't, like I said, you have those systems that are in place. And this is why they're in place because of situations like this. There's domestic abuse shelters that will take you in and help you get an apartment. I've known people that stayed in them. 
So there's all kinds of ways that you can get assistance, but you have to raise up and come past the fear and go for it because the situation isn't going to get any better. Nine times out of 10, these things either stay exactly the same or they escalate to the point where there is a real problem. So if you're staying for the kids, you're not really helping the kids. And nine times out of 10, you're not really staying for them. You're staying because you're afraid. Raise up. <laughs> Raise up, okay? We are all afraid of something at some point in our life, but you can overcome it. Just believe that you can and you'll do it. I was, oh my God, my daughter was born when I was 17. I ended up leaving her father when I was, oh, must have been like 19, 20, somewhere around there. And I had nothing. I had no skills. I was going to school. I was really smart. I was going to school and I had a little part-time job. And I took a second part-time job. And between those two part-time jobs and going to school, I was able to make it happen. It was hard. It was so difficult and I cried many a day, but I made it happen and so can you. So if you're in a bad situation and you're putting up with it for a horrible reason, it's time to stop making excuses and move on, okay? So somebody, uh, remember I told you that the, the person that gave me this situation, the woman is an Aquarius. And most Aquarius will be out like deuces, but there are cases like this one where the Aquarius is either afraid or think they have a good reason and they will hang in there. And this is never a good reason. It's not good for anybody, okay? All right, guys, it's time for me to get going. Again, Jim, Thank you. <laughs> Merry Christmas. All right, guys. If you would like to get a reading done, please email me and I'll be so happy to give you an appointment. Likewise, if you want to chat with me or you have anything else you need, my information is going to be underneath this video. Thank you for being here. Come back soon because I have a lot more to say. See you later.